Hey guys, James at Carson Park. So I'm gonna do a front end alignment. I've, I've done a lot of these. I've wanted to uh, take the time to do a video. Um, there's other videos out there, but uh, if, if you're subscribed to my channel, which I hope you do, click subscribe. But I wanna show you how I do a front end alignment. I have been doing this for the last four years or better, and it works out great for me. So I am at a customer's house, and he's got a super nice garage, super clean. So the first thing I wanna do is I'm gonna take my level, I wanna make sure my floor is flat. Cause if I'm gonna do front end alignment, I wanna make sure it's flat. So, I'm taking my level, and I am very close. I mean, almost dead on it. So the other thing that I'm gonna do, because I'm gonna use this line, it's kind of my baseline. I'm gonna put my level here. Make sure that my level's on there, dead on it. Builder did a great job on this floor. Do it again on this side nearly dead on it. I'm very close. So that's going to be close enough. So now what we're going to do is we're going to check the camber. The camber is how the wheel tilts in or out. Caster is a whole different thing. These carts do not have caster adjustments, but the first thing I want to do is get the camber right. Once I get the camber right, then we're going to make some adjustments here for the toe in. Uh, our camber adjustments are going to be, this is a double A arm adjustable. It's going to be on the top one and the bottom one. And this is a club car that I built and sold about a year ago. It's a good idea to do this every year. So let me show you how we do that. So what we do is we put our square right up against the floor. See it touching the bottom of the tire? We are definitely leaning in. So I've got that much room that I need to make up. Now let's go look at the other side. Take my square. Make sure, and, and also guys, depending on the tire, see the, the grooves on the knobs? Make sure whatever you're touching, and I'm doing this with one hand, but make sure it's touching the side wall of the tire and the knobby is not pushing it out. So we wanna get it in, it's flat on my floor. I'm a whole lot closer on this side. So the other side is probably my problem for the steering, but uh, we're going to adjust both sides and my goal is to get that vertical straight up and down. So let me start doing some adjustments. All right, guys, as we get started, I'm gonna show you the tools that I am going to need. So we're gonna make some adjustments on these uh, pine joints here, also on the tie rod end. And we're gonna need to pull these bolts off right there on the top. So let's start with the top. So those bolts at the top are actually uh, hex headed but a T55 works very good. So these teeth will bite into there to loosen that, and you'll see as we go on with the video. That was a half inch drive, so I need my ratchet. You're gonna need some Loctite to put it back together so it doesn't back out. You're also gonna need those bottom hom joints or the three quarter wrench. That's gonna adjust it here, and there's another three quarter bolt underneath the bottom. Let's see if we can see it. There you go, you can see it right there. So we're gonna need just that three quarter. There's another three quarter at your top A arm. So we're gonna need our three quarter wrench for that. And then for the tie rod ends, I use an 11 sixteenths. I think there's a metric equivalent, 17, 16, 17 millimeter, but I use a 11 sixteenths and then a 12 millimeter. So what these two bolt or wrenches are gonna be used for is for my tie rod, this large nut right here, which we're gonna make some adjustments on there. That's my 11 sixteenths. And then right on the tie rod itself is the 12, the 12 millimeter. So it will hook on just like that for me to make my adjustments. So that's what I'm gonna use these two tools for. Obviously my square that I showed you earlier that I checked the camber with, and then the level and a piece of shock cord, I'm gonna show you how that's gonna work later in the video. Uh, floor jack, you do need a floor jack for that. Now, some of these A-arm kits, it just depends on what manufacturer you use, and I'm not even sure where I got that one from. It was just whatever was available. But that bottom nut right there, instead of it being a three-quarter, it's gonna be a 22 millimeter. So I brought some extra tools with me. I have seen some of the heavier duty ones use a 25 millimeter. So, and of course you can always bring your uh, adjustable wrench, but I like trying to use the exact size you know, it just make sure you're careful and you don't strip them out. So now the next step is we all, we remember the passenger side was leaning in a good bit. So I am going, while the wheels are on the ground, 
I'm going to take my T55, my half inch wrench, and I've only got one hand, no tripod. Uh, I'm doing this mobily, but I'm gonna go ahead and loosen this top nut and bolt, and I'm gonna take it all the way out. And I'm gonna use my floor jack, I'll show you in a second. And as I loosen it, loosen it, it's gonna pull that wheel out. And then once I do that, I personally like to roll the cart back and forth about 12, 15 feet, double check it again against my flat floor with my uh, square. So I'm gonna show you how all that works, but let me go ahead and start getting that nut loose and then I'll come back on the video. All right, while the wheels were down, I took my T55, I did loosen this. And so if I zoom in, this bolt is probably about a inch and a half, two inches long. I'm gonna have to take it all the way out. That's where you need your floor jack. So you need to support your front end suspension. And as I lift that out and that bolt comes completely out, the wheel's just gonna kind of flop around. I'm gonna loosen that three quarter bolt and I'm gonna unthread the uh, heim joint so it actually pulls the front end out. Now, as it pulls the front end out, it's gonna affect the toe and the tire's gonna tilt in. That's an exaggeration. But that's why you need to do the camber first, the toe last. So let me get that out and show you. All right, guys, so I've got this loosened out. You can see where my old Loctite was from a year ago. That's probably just some moisture that was inside the hind joint. But you take that bolt, that's about how long it is. So we're gonna take it out. I've already loosened my three quarter. And so now what I like to do is I like to just push it just barely touching so I can tell how much I'm loosening it. So now I am loosening this counterclockwise and the angle of the camera is, is tough, I'm sorry, where the lens is. But I can tell right now, I've moved it about a quarter inch. I'm just gonna start right there. Maybe, no, nope, sorry, just the angle of the camera. So I also wanna make sure this little swivel is loose, and it is. This customer does a very good job keeping everything lubricated, and you should too. So now this tire is gonna pull out. I'm gonna need both hands. And now I'm going to not put Loctite on it first. I'm gonna, you'll end up screwing yourself. So I'm gonna get this in there, get it threaded. Once everything is in my specs, and we'll see this as the video goes along, then I'm gonna probably back this out enough to where I can put Loctite on there and tighten it down without moving this. So my adjustment will be the same. So let me get this in there and then we're gonna double check our camber. All right, so I just tightened that up and all I did was snug it till it, till it yeah, I'm not torquing it, but I snugged it till it's, it's all the way down. You can see on my nut how much I moved it. So it definitely should be a difference when I check it. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let the jack down and I'm gonna use my square and let's see what, what kind of difference it made. Not worried about toe, just worried about camber. All right, I just backed it up into the driveway and pulled it forward, let everything kind of settle down. Now let's see where we're at. So I've got the bottom touching. Well, actually it's not touching, look there. I barely got a gap. That's probably about a 16th of an inch, but the top is touching. So that was just a lucky guess. Maybe I do so many of these. So before I do anything else, let's check the other side. So we'll come over here. And guys, as you do one side, it will affect the other side. So as I push it on there, the top is touching, no gap. The bottom, I'm about the same. I'm about a 16th of an inch. Now, I will tell you this, every video that you look at, every uh, manual, they're gonna tell you to have them straight up and down. I'm gonna tell you this, from my personal experience, if it is just barely, barely cambered out. They tend to steer easier. Um, when you put weight on them, what does it do? It pulls the front end down. Um, this particular cart here is on the coast and I'm sure they have friends with them. That was just a lucky guess that I, was, I only had to adjust one side. This alignment's spot on. So now I'm gonna move over to the next adjustment, which is gonna be my toe in. And I'm gonna show you how I do that by myself. Oh, one other thing I need to chime in on this video. Now that I'm satisfied with my camber, I need to put the Loctite on that bolt. So that's gonna be my next step. I'm also gonna double check the torque on all the other three that I did not even touch, but I wanna make sure they're tight. All right, guys, I double checked the torque on all my bolts. My, there's four of them. You got two lower and two upper. So everything was in line. I checked it with my square. I'm right where I wanna be. 
So what I did off camera was I went ahead and loosened up that bolt. And just in case you're wondering, I've got a little uh, multi-set I picked up from O'Reilly's. They do not sponsor my channel, I promise you that. It just happened to be there. But it's a good little quick thing for me to carry around for these mobile repairs. It has uh, Torx bits on there and also the Allen head. So the Allen head that matches up to this T55 is a 3 8 inch. I don't think it's gonna show you that, but it is a 3 8 inch. Has a little adapter like this. It goes to a 13 millimeter. So that actually had a better fit on this particular um, uh, front end uh, uh, spindle bolt. So I'm going to use it. So when you jack it up and take the pressure off of it, you can actually pull this bolt up. So if you remember, I showed you how long that bolt was. I want to put Loctite on these threads so the Loctite goes inside of the spindle. Doesn't do you any good to leave this down put Loctite here and it just ends up behind the heim joint. It's not gonna do the job. So be sure if you relieve the pressure off this tire, you can pull that up by hand and then I'm gonna snug it down. Now, why didn't I take it all the way out? You don't need to and it's just another mess to deal with. So I'm going to take a towel, wrap it around the bottom to keep it from dripping. I'm gonna put four, five, six good drops of Loctite. I'm gonna twist this at the same time. No, no way I'm gonna be able to do this on camera, but you, you got it, you can figure it out and then I'm gonna snug it down and tighten it down. Since I did not turn the threads any, it's not gonna affect my alignment at all. Once I get that done, then I'm gonna take my three quarter and I'm gonna spin that up and I'm gonna tighten it all the way against the upper A arm. So that's the next step. All right, I am gonna to try to do this in one hand. So there's my Loctite. Got some drops, you see what I'm talking about with the, uh, with the uh, towel. Okay, I gave it about a half turn. I know the lighting's horrible. Got some more in there. Turn it. So I'm working that Loctite down into the spindle. I'm gonna give it some more. And this Loctite is, of course, it's probably just warm out here. It's very liquid. All right, so I'm gonna snug that in. That's enough. And then I'll come back on the camera once I wipe it up. All right, now that I got everything set up, I'm gonna take the end of my tape measure and I'm gonna hook it on the outside and pull it tight, snug, on the end of that level. Now I'm gonna come over here and if you look at the tire, it's got a pretty significant little manufacturer's line and let's take a measurement where it is. So it looks like it's around 43 and a quarter. Now I'm just gonna unhook it. Here's the part you got to lay down on the ground. And I'm going to go to the other side, hook it on my level, and measure it. So I'm at 43 and 7 eighths. So 43 and 7 eighths, that same little line. Let's double check the front. Forty-three and one quarter. So that tells me that the tires are really towed in. The back is a good bit wider than the front. So now, how do we lengthen that out? Here's where your 12 millimeter and your 11 sixteenths come in. Now, I've already loosened my 11 sixteenths, so now I just need to move my 12 millimeter. So for now, I'm going to kind of guesswork. So I know I've got to go between what, a quarter and seven eighths. So I'm gonna pull down. As you pull down, and there again, this is repetition for me. So as you pull down, it pushes the tires to the passenger side. So I'm gonna pull down maybe another, another good three, three turns, somewhere around there. Now I'm gonna need to unhook that. I'm gonna need to roll the cart 12, 15 feet, come back in, let everything settle and do the exact same thing again. I'm not too worried about my steering wheel right now. I know it's way off, but that's gonna be an easy thing to fix and I'll show you that. So um, right now I'm just gonna move one side. Let's see what happens and come. All right, I pulled semi straight in the garage. You can see the steering wheel's way off center. Do not let that bother you. I've got my level with my bungee cord set up again. Get my towel out of the way. So let's start all over again. Again, and I apologize for this jerky video. I said I do do everything by myself, so I'm one-handed. So we're at 43 and 5 eighths. 
Let's go to the other side. Time to get on the ground, lay down. Whoops. And let me tell you something else, guys. Don't run over your tape measure. You run over these things with a golf cart tire, it will split it. I've done that before. So 43, and what was it, 5 eighths? So now I'm at 43 and 5 eighths. Let's check the front again. Forty-three and five eighths. So right now I am towed exactly one hundred percent. Just I'm at zero, zero tow. Um, I have found the faster the golf cart goes, if you can tow the front end, maybe an eighth of an inch in, uh, maybe a sixteenth to an eighth, maybe a quarter, quarter at the most. Tow it in, they just seem to handle better. If you tow it out, which what the manufacturer tells you to do, tells you to do it like a quarter out. Still, again. It only if I've only seen effects at high speeds, you know, 25 miles an hour or faster, and then it kind of wants to go one way or go the other way. So for right now, I'm gonna test it at zero and just see how the cart drives. All right, guys, going on the first test drive. No traffic, so I'm right in the middle of the road. As I'm going straight, you see how off my steering wheel is. So again, I'm going straight. Trying to take a mental note how off my steering wheel is. Now I'm going to pull over in a safe place. I'm going to show you how we're going to straighten that out. All right, so this is where my steering wheel is, but yet my tires are going straight down the road. So if I straighten the steering wheel out to the left, if you watch that left tire, you see how it comes over. So we're going to take our 12 millimeter. You're going to have to do this while you're test driving it. So I actually had to pull the wheels out this way, which means they need to come to the passenger side. If you remember from earlier in the video, you pull down on the tie rod ends to bring the tires that way. Now, how do I do that without messing up my toe in alignment? Super simple. Turn it the same number of clicks or the same number of rounds. So I am going to, and I'm kind of making a visual I should have brought my Sharpie. Sometimes you can make it with a Sharpie, but I do them so often I know what I'm doing. So I'm gonna bring my uh, rod from straight up. Make sure that's loose. It is straight up. That is a half turn straight down. And I'm gonna do one more straight down. Now I've got to do the same to the other side. If I pull down on one side, I need to pull down on this side. So I've got my wrench. I'm gonna come down, then I'm gonna do it again. Now, I will tell you this. If you drop your wrench during the alignment, it kind of screws you up. And if you look at this, I don't know if you can see it, there's a slight mark right there. Let's see if I can zoom in on it. That must have been when I sold the cart when it was brand new. So anyway, this is a yearly maintenance deal that I'm doing on this customer's cart. So now, let's drive it and see how the steering wheel works. All right, trying to get a straight shot, which I feel like I'm going straight. Look at my steering wheel. Take them up pretty close. Let's take another turn and see how it does. All right, traffic's clear. I got a straight shot ahead of me. All right, the cart is going dead straight. Guys, I nailed it. That was just the look of the draw. Two turns is how far it was off look at it I'm dead on it so now we need to lock it down all right guys before I lock this thing down I pass one of these speed things hey you cannot pass one of those up if you're a guy without taking a look at it so 24 miles an hour not too bad uh, this cart here has lead acid batteries it also has a plum quick motor again that these are about a year old so the batteries were new a year ago um, I'm a big, might as well go ahead and throw in my little shameless plug here. I am a eco battery, lithium battery dealer. I can ship straight to your home. I've seen the same combination with the 23 inch tires and the uh, Plum Quick motor registering a consistent 29 to 30 miles an hour. So you even get a little more with the lithium power. But uh, anyway, that was kind of funny. Can't pass a radar without trying to see what you can do. So now let's uh, pull over and tighten up these jam nuts. There's a little shot of that Plum Quick motor. Uh, like I said, this is a 2016 Club Car Precedent, 23 inch tall tires. Um, 
pretty standard bill for us builder guys. So now let's go ahead and lock these in. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this jam nut, the 11 16 and tighten it till it touches and then tighten it up. So this, there's no way that this rack and pinion uh, uh, arm can twist, which would affect the alignment. Now, I do like to do this with two hands because, well, let's see what happens. So as I'm pulling this down, yep, it started to do it. This tie rod end started to move and that stayed still. So I'm gonna take two hands. I'm actually going to pull this down. Well, here, that'll work. Just until it stopped, you saw that. So now I'm gonna try to, it'd be a lot easier if I had a tripod. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, all right, once I held it with two hands, I snugged up on it. Now that it's tight, you see the tie rod end is down. I'm just gonna kind of recenter it. And moving that little bit is probably not gonna make much of a difference. But that jam nut is tight. So now I'm gonna do the same to this side. Now on this passenger side, I actually had to pull up to tighten it. So everything just kind of rotated. I put the wrench on there. Everything just rotated up. And once I snugged it, then I pulled it back down to where it's level. So I'm gonna do some more test driving. Then I'm gonna call my customer and tell him that he's ready to go. But it's a beautiful cart. Uh, like I said, I did this one about a year ago. He does a real good job taking care of it. And uh, other than just a little bit of yearly print, uh, preventative maintenance, these cars should get you, my gosh, 20, 30 years worth of life. All right, guys, so that's a wrap for front end alignment on a club car precedent. Um, uh, pretty simple. You, you do a lot of them. You know, you end up kind of getting an idea how much you need to turn, but there's a little bit of trial and error to begin with. But um, as always, man, I appreciate you guys tuning into my channel. Please click and subscribe. That helps me out. And uh, I like to try to put golf cart tips that just your ordinary Joe can do. So uh, if you're interested in a lithium battery, plum quick motor, I try to keep those in stock. Um, I cycle them about every 30 days. So if you call me and I'm out, generally within 30 days, I can have you one. But uh, most of the time I have them in stock for the club car president. So I'm a big club car guy. But uh, anyway, appreciate you tuning in. Um, hit me up if I can help you with anything. And you guys have a great one.